suffer an injury, uh, Tyrus, Tyrus Edney, an injury in that championship game in 95. So maybe the Holland's injury is something that foretells good fortune for UCLA. Cameron Dollar yeah, stepping yep. up in. Big baby getting it down low to start. Takes the fadeaway in the back of the rim. And almost into the arms of Thomas, but the Bruins break out. Boy, there are some fine-looking athletes on the floor right here. I mean, just, just the first 30 seconds of this game, you're looking at some big-time athletes. This is the guy that I think can be the difference maker. Now, he took one too many steps. Well, the first two possessions, my two difference makers came up short in both ends. Yeah, missed shot and a walk. Is that I'm what you meant? It. I'm all over it. Yeah. No, no, I really do believe that the guy who has the better game between those two, his team is going to be victorious. We'll see what happens. Good backdoor cut. Thomas. It's Temple. And Thomas battling for it. The freshman comes away. The Bruins foul, and it's on a Flavo. Oh, no, that Hightower says, hold on, I got him for a travel. He had him a travel before the foul called. One official overrules the other. Now let's see. Hold on a second. Wow, and now overrule of an overrule. Yes, that's right. Kind of interesting. So a Flavo picks up the foul. And let's see if backing down is available in this game like it was in the first one. Collins comes in with the block, but the Tigers pick it up and convert with Daryl Mitchell. Breakdown that time by Farmar. He should have seen that Mitchell was left on it alone. He was worried about the pass outside. Left the ball handler wide open. Here's Hollins. Takes the jumper and hits it. He was the one that Dan Bonner spoke of with the injury yesterday in practice, the contusion. In the right thigh, but he gets a block and a basket in the opening minute and a half. Mitchell with a three. That's off the shot clock. It's going to the Bruins. Mitchell has never seen a shot he doesn't like, and he will take them. But he's had a good NCAA tournament. In the game against Texas, however, he was two for ten, scored 11 points. But other than that, he has been a real factor offensively. Double-figure games all through this tournament. Bob Mute over to Flavo, and they're working it down low. Holland sets up Farmar. Three-point shot, yes. Well, we're getting some good open looks from two teams that up to this point have shut everybody down defensively. Farmer pushes Big Daddy on the way down the floor. Daddy was that. like a fly on his shoulder. <laughs> Didn't budge him an no, inch, did it? No. <laughs> and not a good idea either. Mitchell bouncing it in, and look at the shot made. Thomas working the baseline. So far, we're seeing both teams not worrying about the other guy's defense. They're taking it right at him. Giving Umba Mute some room for his jump shot. Thomas playing way off him. Good fight over the screen by Mitchell. And now the Bruins working it down to 10 on the shot clock. Collins trying to set a screen. Got to take the jumper. Bozeman in the paint. Must do something with it. Off the back of the rim. And Thomas, again, that great leaping ability exhibited there. Jim, UCLA, not a great perimeter team in regard to their guys that play in that front line, but there were some wide open looks. They got to take advantage of them. Asman Mitchell. And that one rattles out. Farmer on the drive, and he is bumped by Mitchell. They're going to say, I believe, no basket before the shot. I think it's going to be Temple on the bump. I thought he should have got a continuation there. They called it on Mitchell. And that's his first. Now the road to Indianapolis for LSU. They were down to Iona in a huge second half. Mitchell hit the winner against AM, then knocked out Duke and Texas nice. in overtime. Mata coming in and gets the basket. He broke his nose Wednesday in a practice here. And Mata comes right in and gets uh, a quick two. He came in off the flight from Los Angeles and held a nighttime practice. And he took a shot to the face. Did Mata from a boy out. And look at this at this end. Good job by Mata coming over there on the kick out to draw the charge. 
He had four big points in that Memphis game. He's got a big body, and there he was. I really think that that foul should have been against Mata. He never established a defensive position, but not the way it was called. Mata coming in and making a difference. And the Bruins have also brought in Darren Collison, number two. This is a deep team. Not going to be a big fall off with Collison in that backcourt. There he is, Collison's first action, freshman from. And Butte has got to figure out how to go ahead and make Thomas play him a little bit. Bozeman driving and blocked. Follow up though, beats the shot clock just in time. Ba Mute. And Jim, that's what I was talking about. He's got to figure out a way to make Thomas play something, play him a little bit so he's not available for all that shot blocking from the weak side. Been a quiet start for Big Baby. Hadn't touched the ball much except the first possession. And that's Mata forcing the steal, and the Bruins are racing. And the ball deflected out. Last touch by LSU. So the Bruins get the good start. Farmar hits a three. And at the first break, 9-4 UCLA. Florida, the first SEC team to reach the championship game since they did it in 2000. Bowing out at that point to Michigan State. Here in the Dome back then, and the last Pac-10 team in the final, Arizona in 01, which fell to Duke in the championship. And look, Kareem is here. The greatest college player of all time. The greatest winner, three championships, three <laughs> MOPs, and a, a great sign. <laughs> and look at this, Eli and Peyton Manning. I'll tell you, they threw a little surprise birthday party for Peyton today. His 30th was a few days back, and his wife, Ashley, surprised him about 1 o'clock this afternoon as a Flavo hits the three. Jim, there is the guy that is the difference maker. Terrific outside shot. What we're seeing right away is that UCLA matches up athletically with this LSU team. They can go up with them. And so now this is going to be some battle. Mitchell. He's off early from the outside. He will keep shooting. Thomason, great quickness. Oh, he was setting a really strong screen. Flavo had a uh, foot on the floor as he tried to save it. LSU, before this point, its largest tournament deficit, Billy, coming in was seven. They were down seven at one time to Texas. Well, seven is an interesting number. That's how many times they've played UCLA and they've never beaten. That's right. Winless all time. These are in for LSU handling it right now. Number 35. Mitchell, jumper. And not getting many good, easy shots against this UCLA team. Big baby hit the floor, but he's and up that, quickly. That, yeah, that leaves Mata wide open inside. Yeah, Wisely pulls it out. Yeah, he couldn't quite handle it. I think that LSU has got to spend more time getting Big Baby be the ball down in low in this ball game. They're just going straight to perimeter shooting. It's not what their advantage is. And a flow, not this time. They've got a Boya into the lineup, too, for the Bruins. As you said, great depth. Jasmine Mitchell, Big Baby, off the glass, and he's on the board. Yeah, you've got to go ahead and go your strength against their weakness. Now, I realize UCLA already playing three different men on Big Baby in this ball game. Allen started. We have Mata play him a little bit, and Abayo has played him. A basket by Davis breaks a three-minute, 47-second span without a field goal and a 7-0 stretch. UCLA on a 7-0 run until that Davis hoop, and Mitchell oh. is rejected. That That's was Boya. Yeah, he says, is no way. He had judged that all the way down the floor. Great hustle on his part. Billy, the Bruins road to Indianapolis. The most significant thing, Gonzaga, when they shut him down the last three minutes, scored the last 11 of the game to knock out the Zags and Adam Morris. The shot short. Got a break. Bob Lute on the coming in from the wing, and he's fouled on the way up. That was almost a four-on-one break. A terrific job in a long rebound from Gets it out, and there's the hammer. Temple gets a hand in there to save two points. Jim, you know what was interesting about that region? 
You had four teams out there, power teams, including Memphis, who they knocked off, Gonzaga, who they knocked off, that all won their postseason conference tournaments. Uh, that is very unusual for four really good clubs to be in the same region. So UCLA uh, had their work cut out for them and handled it nicely. One and more coming from Bob Mute, the Cameroonian, who as a freshman has given them almost a double double average on the season nine points, eight rebounds. Just his fifth year of organized basketball, and what a talent he is. Number one freshman rebounder and freshman of the year in the Pac 10. UCLA brings in Michael Roll, number 20. There's no drop off athletically when they go into this bench. They are now almost 10 deep in this ball game, aren't they? That's right. It's nine, actually. And the roll, yes. Bizarre did the nice thing up there. He almost touched that ball on the rim, pulled his hand back just in time. Basket by Magnum Roll of the Tigers. Holland's underneath. Magnum Roll trying to defend, and he's over the back. About the Bruins on the inside, Billy. They're doing a fine job on the inside on both ends of the floor. Mata came in and really gave them a nice lift. Thomas is out right now. Big Daddy Davis is out as well. So LSU nowhere near as big on the inside, and UCLA takes advantage of it going right away to Hollins. We saw a young guy have a terrific ball game. He was the he was the MVP of the region. About the only thing that he did not do well, he was two for 11 against Memphis from the foul line. Other than that, he was truly outstanding. 14 points and nine rebounds. Almost ended up playing his college career at St. Louis where he was recruited there by Lorenzo Romar. But once Romar left St. Louis, and there he is to go to Washington, Hollins decided to get out of his commitment and went to UCLA. Romar not too far this year, that one possession Ooh. from having a chance to get to a Final Four himself. One Rashad Anderson. Great breathtaking shot from being in that regional final, which yeah. was Mason. And a steal on the way, you can see it. Bob goodbye. As I said, there is some real athleticism on this court, and to be quite honest with you, UCLA is overmatching the athletic LSU team. The Bruins are off and running to a 10-point lead. We are back in our Southwest Airlines sideline report. Let's focus in for a moment here on Ben Howland, just his third year, Billy, and what a turnaround it's been. Well, thir three, third years are charms for this guy. That's yes. what he did at Pitt. He took uh, Northern Arizona to the NCAA tournament. Outstanding job at Pitt, left that program in great shape, and now he's got UCLA in super shape. And this was a good move. Get Davis back in the game and get the ball in his hands because without question, you can see superiority on the perimeter in this ball game for UCLA. They, the only way to counter is to go to Davis and have Thomas trying to go ahead and put anything he misses back in on a rebound offensively. That basket, not counting. It was way before that, the foul on Bozeman. They work it back down to him. He wants to challenge Hollins. Good and Hollins with the body. This is a good strategy right here now by Coach Brady. Get that ball to the horse and force UCLA to put a lot of different people on him. Hollins are not strong enough to play him inside. Farmer back for the Bruins. Out goes a Flalo. Pass to Davis in the paint. And the bound out to Collison. Davis unable to convert the short one. But that's their play, though. Nice decision by Collison not to try to break out of there. Too much traffic in the way. Bozeman not a great perimeter shooter. More of a slasher. As you remember, when he started out at UCLA, he was a point guard. He was a detriment when he went to the foul line. Become much more solid now as a forward. Here he is, Bozeman. Down low, trying to get the handle. Three on the shot clock. Squeezes it out of there and makes it in. What an effort. I said he's a slasher. That wasn't yes. He got slashed. But he's a lot stronger now than he was as a freshman. Coming off that serious injury. He's now a fifth-year senior. 
formerly led the Pac-10 in assists back in his point guard days. Tyrus Thomas working it down and scoring and drawing the foul. Well, now we have LSU saying, okay, our game is inside. Stop us. Nice job by Thomas. Got a break in the action here. Thomas on the free throw try when we come back. Mute and the Bruins doubling up the Tigers. LSU wants to play this game down in the paint if they can. Get Thomas, get Davis down in low and make Ben Holland have to go ahead and find somebody that can guard him down in there. It's a three-point play for Thomas coming off of Holland's second foul. So Holland's removed from the lineup with the two. Aflalo back in, and Bozeman is bumped by Temple. And there is something that really helps Ben Holland. Now he brings Bozeman, who used to be a point guard, up court, and then Bozeman comes back. So you really have a guy that was at one time a primary ball handler being the outlet pass man, and then he can go ahead and get something started. Nice That's offensive strategy there. That's two on Garrett Temple. Farmar with the long three, and he's good again. He's not having any problems shooting over the top of Mitchell. You notice in both of those occasions, Mitchell was right in front of him. He used his head as a peep sight. Thomas takes the jumper. And that's a flaw with the rebound. Double team coming. Nice job. I thought right again. See, Bozeman is the guy who could be the outlet, then he can make a play. And Davis doesn't get there in time. Hits the deck, and he's going to be whistled for that one. Davis is having a hard time, Jim, just finding out who's guarding him and who he's guarding because Ben Holland using a revolving door with that fifth big man. That foul was his first. And out to Roll, who's back in for the second time. Those Farmer setting up weight because he doesn't want to get in that double team. Nice split of the double team. And last touch by Davis. Split it, but then lost it. But that's that's a move that you're going to see developed by college players in the years to come. They're going to take advantage of that hedge move. Guards are going to start crossover and dribble and cut right down through it. Mata. And that shot blocked partially by Davis. That could have been his third. Sloppy passing. So right back to the Bruins. Aboya back in, number 12. Like you said, they've uh, shuttled in a number of players. They've gone nine deep at the moment. Yeah, I think that they're holding Hollins out, Jim, to go ahead and see if they can't get Davis in some more foul trouble. Then they can bring Hollins back in, not having to play against that power. That's a boy who lost it. Good defense by Thomas. Now, we have Mata now. This is about the fourth defensive assignment that UCLA has used on... Big baby. Big baby. Bang zone the jumper. You know, he's having some trouble out there, it seems, with traction on the floor. Have you noticed that so far tonight? Well, he's Slips. hit the deck twice. Yeah. yeah. A flalo. Oh. Tough shot. He had Temple in his face. Now, we're talking about Temple, a guy who shut down J.J. Redick. He, Redick could never get that shot over the top of him. A follow showing you right there. He put it right over one of the top defensive guards in the country. Davis. And there he fell down again. Yep, you're right, Billy. There's some issue there with his sneakers. That was even. That, and that's going to be a charge. That was not even an attempt by Davis to, to, to try to act as though he'd been oh, no. fouled. No, oh, no, nothing like that at all. He's been on the floor about four times tonight. Billy, the tradition. Well, UCLA, like, as and... you say, in a week like none other. <laughs> <laughs> and you can use it appropriately here as well. A tradition unlike any other, not well, none other. It's close. I'll give you. I'll give you. Some not even close. Bonus enough. points. But you know, the thought was right. Yeah, absolutely. What you talking about, John Wooden? Absolutely. And Mitchell, he got the shot up. They're going to count it. You know, we brought up Coach Wooden's. Name a couple of times. We'll get to that in a second. But check out the traction issue you first spotted, Billy. Yeah, I, I, he, he, that well, that's one, how he got that, tripped. That, that one he got tripped a little bit. He came down. That's fortunate for him that he didn't land on that sneaker a little bit more heavily because that's the, that's one of those deals with an ankle sprain in the making. But he has been slipping on this four this evening. That was a second foul on a flower. So 
Some foul issues creeping up on the Bruins side, and Mitchell converts the three-point play. I just wanted to send along best wishes to Coach Wooden. Back home watching this. Age 95. Here's a 2-3 zone for the first time by LSU in this game. It's been something that Coach Brady has used very effectively in key games to turn things around this year. Moving in on the eight-minute mark. Thomason stepping in on that zone, feeding Mata, and he's fouled on the way up. To speak of in this NCAA tournament, Iona, who this was kind of interesting. When you think of that ball game, they could not handle the guards. And they went to this 2-3 zone. It was extremely effective. They used it throughout the course of the year as well. Auburn game comes to my mind where it was effective getting them back in there for a win. So two coming up for Mata. That foul was on Tasman Mitchell, his first. Mata, again, arrives in Indianapolis. What a greeting. Goes to a Wednesday night team practice. Breaks his nose for the second time this year. You know, isn't it amazing when you look at that injured list for this UCLA team? Just about everybody on the squad, and, and I don't mean in missing games, which most of them did, but almost every guy had some form of injury throughout the course of this year. And the most important, obviously, Josh Ship, who was out for the season. Well, Ben Howland will tell you, though, that the injuries, in a strange way, kind of helped them. It developed a lot more talent. Players got chance to fill in and that's why they're so deep now they know what guys can do as the jumper is fired up baseline by Thomas and it's off the mark you know this Thomas has been playing on the perimeter tonight as opposed to going inside doing what he loves to do like that weak side defensive help he has not been on the offensive boards got a break in the action Bruins by nine they were over 50 percent from the field in the other three tournament games that one by roll was short Uba Mute draws the foul so they were shooting well in the tournament, aside from that one game. Farmar is on the bench. Well, you know another thing, uh, Jim, might have helped UCLA out. A Memphis team is a lot like LSU. It's almost like a, you know, a, a pre-scrimmage game to go ahead and say, here's what you're going to be facing. So that certainly probably helped them. There are different styles, obviously, as we saw even last week, you know, playing against a Boston College, then playing against a Villanova. Different styles of play. Memphis, a perfect setup. Uh, getting by a very difficult John Calipari team to play LSU probably helped UCLA a lot. Thomas to the bench, Lazar in, and one more for Umba Amute, freshman, 8,200 miles from home. And eight double doubles on the year. He hasn't found himself homesick at all, has he? No, not a bit. As Bozeman goes out, Farmar comes back in. He does have family back home following the Final Four as they have been throughout the tournament on the internet. And a double team oh, and a steal. Mba Mute so quick defensively. Jim, he's maybe only playing basketball five years, but he's got 50 years worth of knowledge. How about the way, how about the way he anticipated that play? I was watching him, and he knew where that ball was going to go. That's great natural basketball instincts. Collison hits the jumper, and he's the seventh different Bruin, Collison, to score in this game. As I said, not a lot of fall off when he comes into the ball game in that backcourt. And a steal this time by Roll. He read it, three on two. That one was telegraphed. Roll makes the steal, Good shooter. can he hit the three? No. And Big Baby pulls it away. LSU has got to slow down and wait for Big Baby to get in the low post. That's Goog in the game. They're and from the corner, it. Tasman Mitchell has it stripped. And Mbamute off the fingertips back to LSU. Coming up, singular at the half. Greg Clark and Seth will analyze the first half. And Billy Donovan and Lee Humphrey will join them live on the set. Also a singular Naismith update all coming up. Singular at the half. And there is Billy Donovan. Going to the championship game Monday night. His Florida Gators knocking out George Mason earlier today. Timeout on the floor. Right up around 50% on the year, but LSU holding people below 40. So far, we said something had to give. So far, UCLA has been doing it with excellent perimeter play. Tigers have turned it over their last three trips. Work it back down to Davis with the soft hook and Mbamute skies for the ball. Nice double teaming. Up ahead of Boye. 
Unable to get that one to go. And Boya maybe caught it a little too far away from underneath the basket. Davis weaving, spinning, and not able to bank it down. Football Mute really is some kind of a power player, isn't he, Jim? He's given up some size, but he can handle it. There he is again. Yep, almost able to sky for that one. And what LSU has not been able to do in this first half is to go ahead and get the combination of Thomas and Davis going. And Thomas not on the floor right now. He's coming in in the second first chance, but they have not gotten their two-man game going. Asman Mitchell, that's a three-point try and a long rebound for the Bruins. And I'll tell you what, right now, Davis is hardly getting up and down the floor. This transition, he's asking for a timeout. As a matter of fact, he wants to come out. He cannot get up and down the floor. This game's too quick for him. Another timeout called. This one by LSU. Collison on the layup. And the lead is 12 to 15. Game for LSU, and the reason they can't get anything going offensively, Thomas and Davis between the two of them are four for 11, but the game is being played the full court, and that's not what LSU wants to do against this club. That's holding by Mata out of position. Davis is down at the moment, sitting on the bench. He's two for seven. There he is. And he he's down in more ways than one, down in score, but he actually was exhausted, could not work his way back up and down the floor. So First foul on Mata. And he talked about why he got himself in so much better condition. He said he clunked two free throws against Kentucky in the SEC tournament a year ago and said he really felt that he had let his team down by not being conditioned. But uh, right now, the opposing team is taking a lot of wind out of his sails. 6 1 freshman Ben Vug coming in from Florence, Oregon. There he is. One more for Daryl Mitchell, the only senior in the starting lineup for the Tigers, and one of two. That's it. And of course, uh, LSU, we talk about Ship being out for UCLA with injury for the year. Tack Miner out for the year will be a red medical red shirt for LSU, a guard that played mostly with Mitchell in the past. Tough pass. Not, not there. And the Tigers able to steal it back. Mitchell three, no. Mata, he's been impressive off that bench. He's done a terrific job off that bench. And boy, they're just throwing the ball away. Not taking advantage of this nice working margin they have. Well, Vug with back-to-back -back steals, <laughs> but he throws it right back. And that's a tie-up, they say. The arrow's going to the Bruins. You have to wonder, Jim, some of those passes that were made were just unnecessary. This team is not going to get back in the game throwing the ball around like that. Back coming in for UCLA. Mba Amute will inbound. And Hollins, who, as we mentioned, was the MVP of the region, has not had to be a factor in this game at all. I think he'll come in in the second half as they wear down the inside presence of LSU. Sitting with two fouls, and that's going against Farmar with the charge. He might as well keep Hollins down. He's, Absolutely. again, coming off that injury just yesterday, and if you got a chance to sit him as long as you can, with a lead, with a lead and maybe have the game Monday night come and sit him as long as you can. I agree with you, Jim. And you remember yesterday, he came out very stiff-legged. Matter of fact, did not even have a uniform on, just came out in the sweats and never did get involved in any activity. Michael Roll comes back in for the Bruins. And Magnum Roll, number 15 for LSU. Tough pass, and they throw it away again, and Ben Howland <laughs> cheers on his team. Young man is not capable of playing in this game at this level at this point in his career. He's turned the ball over unnecessarily now three times. And there's where attack minor would uh, certainly, with his experience, help LSU a great deal, but he's not available. You've got to go with the troops that you've got. Mute takes the jumper. Bozeman passing up the three to penetrate and banking it in. Well, he said he's a slasher. You know, and what's really interesting is that UCLA's been able to build on this lead primarily, Jim, with substitutes. Substituting freely and a push off against UCLA. You've got two starters on the floor right now, and Ben Holland has been really using this bench. Very effectively. Foul on Collison, who scored at the other end earlier, helping the Bruins to the big lead. The 
quiet start for Big Baby, who at the age of nine was so big, he had to play in a league with 12-year-olds. They used to tell him, hey, quit crying, you Big Baby, and that's how he got his nickname. He's two of seven from the field, Billy. And that was in football, not in basketball, where he was trying. Right. Can you imagine the guy was a running back in high school? and uh, finally gave up football when he realized his real career would be in basketball. Could you imagine trying to tackle that as a John Brady player? helped him uh, convince yep. him that, hey, you, you can blow out knees <laughs> a lot easier in football than you can in basketball. Went to high school right there on the LSU campus at University High School where Brady's daughters went to school. It's first grade through 12. Are you intimating well, that he said was it the other night. recruiting advantage? Well, he would tell his daughters, <laughs> be sure to go over and say hello to Glenn today and tell him that you're, <laughs> my that you're, daddy you're, wants you. <laughs> my daddy really wants you to come play for him one day. <laughs> he, he said that with the MCA Miles Brand in attendance. Yes, so I think a few that feet he away. Was smiling and a little wink there. Mamute with Big Baby defending. Steps. And that's the call. Tasman Mitchell checking back in for the Tigers. He is going by Glenn Davis uh, with those little pump fakes. I'm surprised Davis doesn't make him shoot the jumper first. But this UCLA has the 14 point lead with 10 turnovers. Each team with 10. Uh, they've been aggressive turnovers though Jim pushing the ball up the floor. And Big Baby is denied. Motto on the block. And the arrow the jump arrow this time in LSU's favor. Tail. Solid minutes by Mata in this game. He's yeah, got that time. protective face gear on, but you know he has sometimes been on Davis. Now he's on roll, but he is uh, playing hard-nosed basketball. And little, if no perimeter game by LSU. Has been Mitchell on the fly, and the foul Push. against UCLA. That's on Bozeman, his second. Remember the first year that uh, Ben Holland and we had a ball game out there at UCLA, and actually, we had the game here in Indianapolis, and uh, he was working his team out, and some of these same players were out there in that practice, and he said, and he, and he didn't like the makeup of the, of the physical nature of the team, and said, no, I'm going to get guys to play tougher. He's gotten some of those holdovers to play tougher, and now I was talking to him about the other day, and he said, well, it's a lot more fun to get guys to play tough when you recruited some real good players. That's right. Well, and he has done that combination beautifully. To play for him, you've got to buy into deep defense wins championships. If not, you're not going to be in his program. That's Mitchell grabbing and pulling, picking up a cheap foul there on the miss. That would walk the length of the floor to start shooting the free throw. And that's a second on Tasman Mitchell. So a one and one, one, one and one again for Mba Amute. What's interesting about the recruitment of this young man, and you see what an outstanding player he is, as I mentioned, the Pac-10 freshman of the year. Ben Holland was after John Brockman, who uh, ended up at Washington, an outstanding freshman himself right there. And when he didn't get him, he said, well, let's go for my second choice, which turned out to be a pretty good first choice. <laughs> you think? Coming in for the first time, Janelle Rubin, so the 10th Bruin to see action. And UCLA has tied its largest lead of 16 with three minutes to go in the half. Kick, but that's a save is Mbaa Mute. If he had not been able to get the foot over there, that would have been Davis on a dunk. Yeah, but this young guy has really good basketball instincts. He plays for a guy, as you mentioned, only five years playing basketball. A really good basketball IQ. We saw him intercept with that anticipation play earlier in the ball game. There was a nice kick on his part. LSU five and a half minutes without a field goal, missing the last seven shots. The big baby struggles to get that one up. Pushed by roll from the back. On roll. Roll on roll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's roll of UCLA on the foul. Not Magnum roll, who will go to the line. And Magnum, how did he? Get that name, Billy? His mother, a big fan of Tom Selleck yeah, and Magnum P.I. Yeah. Please don't count that as a shameless promo of an old CBS <laughs> primetime show. And Roll will get one more. This young man, uh, product of Laurenburg Prep down in Laurenburg, North Carolina, that's produced so many outstanding players. I guess the 
first Final Four man they ever had from Lorenberg Prep was the great Charlie Scott from yep. the University of North Carolina. And that's Mata almost getting in there in time, but Tasman Mitchell with the putback. And Lorenberg Prep team that uh, you referred to, Magnum Roll, part of an undefeated championship team his senior year there. 40 and 0. Ruben just in, puts it over to Roll. Howen yelling in some signals. Collison. Tigers look a little lost on defense as Collison fires up the three. Not a good switching around, and it's off the it's off the Tigers. Not a good possession for UCLA. They lucked out on that one. But they've got again, when you look out on the floor, there is one starter on the floor for UCLA in what you would assume would be a tight ball game. 2.17 to go. That's some real confidence in your bench, isn't it? Yep, that is. And that's the one starter, Zimba Mute, who fields the inbounds pass. As we approach two minutes to go in the half. One starter. And you get the feeling just watching them that they could just, it doesn't make any difference. Well, when you're this deep with this many good athletes in practice, you're playing against good people every day, and that really helps. Thomason in traffic. No place Ball to go. Squirts Two. out. Big Baby dives on the floor. Gets the timeout. Yes, he did. So UCLA will head to the bench, too. LSU calls that timeout. 35-21 Bruins, 149 left, first half. Well, there you had uh, Davis having to call that timeout to stay, save himself from having a turnover. He called another timeout because he was so tired he needed to have a break. So there's two of them. They have not made a three in this game. Down low, Tasman Mitchell. Good job getting that shot up and in. And here comes UCLA. They're turning this into a run game. Ruben out high. Bob Mute goes right past Big Baby and banks it home. Now that's something. He beats Davis with the dribble. And then who is he going to have to face? No, nobody other than Thomas, the co-defensive player of the year in the SEC, who has been a shot blocking maven in this tournament and goes right over him. And that's right off the hands, right through the arms of Thomas. Back to the Bruins. Look at that play. That is some play there when you consider who he beat. And he did it all by himself. There was no screen. The freshman just took it right to him. Aboya back in for UCLA, and they remain with one starter on the floor. And here he is with the ball. Oh, nice pass. Squeezes the pass to Aboya. And now Collison pulling it back out with 50 seconds. Nice spin move. Collison in the lane, and what a game he's having, yep. too, off the bench. He has uh, pretty good genes himself. Mom an Olympian, his father a track star as well. Look at the coach over there, screaming out for his defense. Der Mitchell, no, Davis. And the foul is underneath. Yes, Collison's hit three baskets off the bench. Well, Collison that time felt the screen coming up to his left, and when he turned his head, that's how he got beat. And here we have Davis, who has had 19 double doubles on the year, Jim. Yep, he's something else. Going to shoot two here. That foul was on Ruben. He uh, dropped 50 pounds. We talk yep. about his size, but you know he gave up the cookies and got into the uh, organic oatmeal and <laughs> shed. A half a hundred. Yeah, it, uh, it doesn't look like he misses a lot of meals, though, when you look at him. I mean, he's got just incredible bulk and some body style. Well, UCLA showing a lot of style here in this half. It can take the last shot. Mitchell, Mitchell ought to go out on Carlson, try to get the ball out of his hands because he's the one going to make the play. They, they don't really have a secondary ball handler on the floor. Thompson now with under 10. They go back to the 2-3 zone. Collison with three. Mba Mute gives it up. Ruben has to put it up. No, not in time inside either. But still, LSU faces at halftime its biggest halftime deficit of the entire season. But without question, it's been the perimeter and the full court game of UCLA much more decisive than anything LSU's had to offer. All right, the Bruins come out with the start of the second half, and they've got Ryan. Collins back on the floor. Set most of that first half with two fouls. 
Collins, a total of six minutes of action. That's it. A lot of team movement right now by UCLA. Look at nice play oh! by Mute. Oh, that was just a great offensive half court set by the starters. Total team movement. Everybody moving without the ball. And finally, the backdoor situation wide open. And the 17 point lead, largest of the game. Davis doubled up, swarmed, and comes up short on the layup. Nice hands by Hollins in traffic. UCLA again rushing it forward, and that one's short for Maflalo, who steps back, feeds Farmar, and that's back of the rim. Two good looks and another offensive rebound. And what's the problem right now for John Brady, who used so many timeouts in that first half, Jim? Even a run by UCLA can't stop. By using a timeout now, the guys are going to have to do it on the floor. He's only got two timeouts to work with, and that's knocked out. It'll be the Bruins' ball. And let's take a look at power. Oh. Power in the paint. Oh. Umba Mute. <laughs> so quick to the glass, giving up some size, but power and quickness all his. Quickness start by Thomas knocking that back out. And I'm really interested to see if LSU can get the ball in the low post and make the double teams take place with Davis passing and Thomas on the weak side able to put some away. So far, been totally ineffective. Nice screen inside. Bamute again, and the basket rattling around as someone got a hand up there. The backboard just that, shaking. That was Thomas. And it may have affected that ball going in or out. Oh. Davis down low. And again, unable to make the chippy. He's two for nine. But did you see where Thomas was, Jimmy? He was up at the top of the key instead of being down there for that putback. Back to Mba Mute. Oh. He says, I'm going to take a step forward and dunk it down. Here's where Brady cannot afford to call another timeout, but he can't take too much time. This game is totally getting away from him. Those two timeouts that Davis called in the first half, one because he was on the floor, and one because he was tired, really hurting LSU. And he draws a foul on Bozeman of the Bruins. There's an excellent screen oh. that time by Hollins. Set up his teammate perfectly. Oh. No hesitation. He sees they're not going to close in on the lane. Oh. So he well, takes it on in. Yeah, he realized he didn't realize that Hollins' screen was going to be so effective. As with Mitchell, the first one. And Jim, one Way of the off. things now, if you're LSU or any team in this kind of position, you, you got to start thinking perimeter play. But on the year, as, as well as they played, they were 10th in the SEC in three-point shooting. So that's why they're trying to take that ball inside, and UCLA's prepared for it. They're just not a big, by percentage or even by quantity, a big three-point shooting team. Really, only Daryl Mitchell puts them up with uh, regular consistency. They're 0 for 3 in this game, so that's not really a comeback avenue for them. And they go to the 2-3 zone because UCLA has been running their half-court offense so effectively here in the second half. A pie, Hollins from Farmar. We are seeing, Jim, a great, great performance by UCLA. Oh, they, have taken, they have taken an LSU team that beat Duke and beat Texas, and they are tearing them apart in every phase of the game. On the back, Mba Mute with the push, his first, and what a feed by Farmar. You know, you said it, Billy, when you're, when you get to this point, as you can't lob any better than that, when you get to this point, you get to the Final Four, you think of the teams that are sitting at home, like a Gonzaga that's saying, and we had these guys by 17 <laughs> at one time. How about Alabama? Yeah. <laughs> And Mitchell, nice. Lazar, and look at this again, the loose ball picked up by UCLA. Lazar was not ready to finish. He had the opportunity. Gonzaga had a giant lead on them, and then again, late, the last 11 to the Bruins. And then you that. think of LSU, and they, they held Duke to its lotus, lowest point total in 10 years, 62-54. And uh, Texas had a good swing at the plate also, and then lost in overtime to them. So these. Teams that are cast aside on the road to the Final Four. Five on the shot clock, Aflalo in no trouble. Ball. And up ahead, Mitchell to Mitchell. And does a great job of staying in the air. He felt 
It'll buy Mute on his back. You know what he did, Jim? And it's a great move for a small guy. He knew he had a shot blocker on his back, so instead of going right to the basket full speed, he slowed up a little bit and took the legs out of Mbappe. Mbappe. Now you see the 2-3 zone. Lalo looking for a hole somewhere for his jumper. He's got it. He doesn't take well, it. He's There's been very patient. Even three on the shot clock, Billy. So Farmar loads it up and hits a big one. And now the biggest lead of the game. Wow. Every phase of the game has been Bruins. 21 up. And how about this? The Bruins called the timeout. Not LSU. Hollins on the inside. It's all Bruins. Had a jersey retired here just the other night and had his uh, his school and his program over to watch it all happen. It was very special for him. 21 point lead. Uh -huh. UCLA with a steal. Farmar. Everything that they're doing is as good as you can do it. Like that. And that's a two. He had a foot on the line. And LSU not only has no, had no answer up to this point, Jim, they have no answer for the rest of this game. They are not a perimeter shooting team. They're only going to go inside. You can see UCLA really packing down now, even with their perimeter players. Lazar, and that one sends him to the line, and a break in the action, the under-16 timeout. 56% Bruins running them off the floor. And Jim, uh, you know, I hate to break this one to you, but uh, we were looking during that timeout. The Bruins' biggest win ever in a, in a Final Four was that game against your alma mater, Houston. Remember Houston beat them in the Astrodome? Yes, so I was gonna about to point that out if you forgot. <laughs> Guy Lewis got the big win in the uh, Astrodome. The, right. the game that changed college basketball because it was such a big event televised. And, and but then when they went back, and you remember Kareem Jabbar, who we showed earlier, yep. had the eye problem. Not to take anything away from the great Houston victory, but they beat Houston 101 to 69. Coach Wooden probably watching tonight and saying, this team is playing right up to that level now because this is really some exhibition by UCLA. 23 point lead in this one. Five minutes into the second half. Speaking of that game, uh, one of the guys who was there, Eddie Einhorn, He's here at the Final Four City, and Farmar off on that one. And, of course, Dick Emberg of our team was right, there to call that right. one. Absolutely correct. And that was one of the few times we've seen Farmar not stay with the offensive pattern. UCLA's shot selection has just been excellent today. They're playing as fine a game as I have seen somebody play, considering the competition and what's on the line this year. They have already matched, Billy, their point total in the Memphis win when they won 50 to 45. Mbamute has that one knocked away, but Farmar runs over to help. Mata had good position that time on Davis. Ball didn't go inside. Clock winding down here. Allison, patient though, now on the floor and tie it up. And it's going the other way. Well, Collison didn't have much chance to take that ball away from no, Davis. That like, that's a mismatch. <laughs> That is a slight mismatch. And we mentioned at the top of the show, LSU has never beaten UCLA. 0-7. And, and it's not going to happen tonight either. Down low. Davis blocked by Mata. What a big performance. And Big Baby knocks that one out. Davis now 2 for 12 in the game. The Emmy Award-winning Amazing Race on the move. New episode on its new day and time, Wednesdays at 8, 7 Central. Tell your friends and neighbors about Amazing Race on Wednesdays on America's number one network. Jimmy, I think back of a matchup between LSU and UCLA back in 1970 when Pete Maravich played. Uh, yep. And uh, Pete had had a great counselor game and scored so many points. And as you know, he's a 40-point scorer. And, Press Maravich, his beach dad, used to call Coach Wooden Padre. And uh, he was saying, wait till we get you next year. And, and Coach, I'll never get Coach Wooden got me aside. He said, you know, Billy, it is a team game. In that game, UCLA won 133 to 84. Yep. Pete was 14 for 42. 
38 points with 18 turnovers. It is 18 18 game. turnovers. Yep. One by almost 50. That game was at Pauley Pavilion. And again, UCLA getting a second chance as Big Baby comes out and down again. A region. Almost a tackle of Collison. Well, Collison tried to steal the ball away from him a second or two ago. Watch, watch the big man come out and yeah, put him down. He has been on the floor a lot. I said earlier in the game he's slipping, but that time, like the time that he came down on somebody's foot, he just happened to fall to the ground. It's and it his, takes a lot of energy out of him. It's his second foul. He's got five points and now one tackle also. Now yep. Thomas comes back in for the Bayou Bengals. I thought Davis could be the, the difference maker if LSU was going to win the game, and obviously he has not been, and they are not going to win the game. A hold call against Thomas on yep. the inside. Mata had good position. He didn't realize that official was right behind him. Now he's got three. The two big guys for the Tigers tonight, five apiece. That's it. Points. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Double up in the corner. Timeout called. Aflalo took the timeout with 13 minutes remaining. Those two big guys you just mentioned, four of 19 from the field. They've been Amazing. shut down. Yep, five overall right. with Market Square back in 80. And what a play there. And Mitchell bangs it off of Collison to give it to the Tigers. Four of them here, 91, 97, 2000. Denny Crum brought his club up from Louisville to win the one at Market Square in 1980. Daryl Griffith with a tremendous MOP performance against UCLA in the final. A UCLA team without a lot of size, right. remember that? Kiki Vanderway was the, their star player, and Larry Brown was their coach who eventually took Kansas to the Final Four and won a championship. Bozeman back on the floor. LSU, three points in this half. That's it, and the Bruins collide with Tyrus Thomas. Big baby, huffing and puffing, Billy, in this one from the really early going. He really has been, and uh, Again, going back to it, I felt that if there'd be a difference maker and LSU would be winning this game, he would be sitting here right now with like 18 points, 10 rebounds, and controlling the perimeter, I mean, controlling the inside. That hasn't happened. Tasman Mitchell scoring on the inbounds pass. You're talking about, with Davis, the SEC Player of the Year, the top rebounder in the SEC, and he limited to five points. And, uh, you know, 19 double-doubles. His yep. consistency this year has been excellent. Still a young player. I mean, it's not like this guy's been a, a senior in, in his play. He's a sophomore, was the freshman of the year last year in the SEC, so he's got a lot of time to go. But tonight, he has been stymied by this tremendous rotation of inside defensive presence of UCLA. Daryl Mitchell whistled for his second, and the Bruins to inbound. Hollins in, and now, you know, now you got Hollins in without the big strength on the floor, and look for him to start playing up over the top. He's got Mitchell on him. Flalo, he's showing that quickness there. Second try, no. Hollins. And there is, again, Hollins, see, without all the body weight in there of, of Davis, Hollins plays up over the top of everybody. The seven-footer who has really gotten himself a lot better than he was when he first entered UCLA. He plays long. You've talked about that so much yep. about that Florida team. That was on Thomas, by the way, the foul. And he has four, and he is still on the floor. And no factor tonight. Nope. This is a kid that, you know, missed a chunk of time late in the season with an ankle sprain. Missed the SEC tournament. Came back, though, there in the NCAAs. And some huge games in that Atlanta Regional. But nothing tonight. Bozeman slashing again. Coming through is Mba Amote. There's Thomas finally getting his hands on a block. A flop. Oh, oh, look at oh, this. You got to give him a shot. Yep, was... Give him two when they come up out of the break. Foul nice. Temple. Nice pump fake on that play. Davis coming back in, Jim. He lost uh, in, the, in the semifinals to Indiana. Bobby Knight's team was the third seed that night. And 
Jim, that was the last. Then he played in the consolation game against Virginia. Lost that game the last time the consolation game has been played in the NCAA tournament. And of course, that was the night that he was playing the consolation game that President Reagan had been right. shot in the afternoon. So a lot of history involved with Dale Brown. The other time he went, of course, he up to this point had brought the lowest seeded team ever to the Final Four, that 11 seed in 86, where never nervous Purvis Ellison in Louisville wiped them out in the semifinals. Ball loose on the floor, picked up by the Tigers. And Mitchell back out. Will they hit a three for the first time? Wow. Not even close. Flalo, Bozeman on the break. Farmar steps in, jumper, no. Former point guard to present point guard. Nice looking break. Just didn't finish off with a shot. Farmer has hit some really big three point shots in this game. Davis accelerating with that one on the drive. Drawing some action. And that foul on Umba Mamute. CBS Sports Line. Greg Doyle, Dennis Dodd will wrap up today's semifinals, plus all the stats, all you need, video highlights after the game at CBSSportsLine.com. And Jim, we realize Davis hadn't had a big game, but I mentioned about 19 double-doubles this year, player of the year in the conference. And when you think about battles he's had this year and performed at Terrence Dial's Ohio State ball game, 25 points, seven rebounds, Dial's 24 and eight, pretty good battle down on the low post. Two big, strong players. Mata back in. And Hollins out, and Davis with one more. He, of course, couldn't help but find himself drawn to comparisons about another former big man inside for this LSU program, Shaquille O'Neal. He changed his number because he didn't want to be Shaquille O'Neal. He wanted to be himself, so that's why he's wearing number zero now. Yep. Plus, he says it reminds him that he started with nothing and uh, makes me think back to when I was little and what I had to do to get to this moment. So he changed the number to zero for a multitude of reasons. He also said, I'm a lot better looking than Shaq, <laughs> and, I, and I, I use better vocabulary words. That's the only comparisons he wanted to make. Mumba Mute, too strong from the side, but back out again, another second chance. And who is it again but Mata? When you start talking about bench productivity, this young man who Broke his nose is really doing the job. It's Roll with the three, and he guns one in. And, and again, we look out on the floor, and it's the subs. Three out of the five players on the floor, off the bench. I mentioned that incredible first half where the subs almost played as many minutes as the starters for UCLA. And you can afford to double down if you're UCLA because it's not going out to the perimeter. Well, that's all muscle, but so fatigued. Even the short shots, it's just hard to even get him up there with the authority he normally does. He'll retreat to the line for two. Third foul on Umba Amute. And you can see how Davis is trying to get his breath right now. It takes off a lot of what you would be doing as a free throw shooter. This year we saw J.J. Redick for the first time in his career shoot under 90%. I'll tell you, when you move as much without the ball and you get some tired legs out there, that free throw shot will get away from you. And that's what happened to Davis on that one. And again, numbers just a revolving door for UCLA with these big men that have been guarding all of teammates, giving Mata a big hug over there for the job that he has done every minute he's played. Davis missing Davis both. Misses both. And the Bruins in full control. And they have been virtually all the way. It's been just like this. Got out to that 20 to 8 beginning. Led at halftime by 15. Jim, I really like the way they spread the floor and really make LSU work, taking away some of that shot blocking ability inside. Uh, Hollins trying to lob it, and way too high for a boy up. But again, the Bruins getting all the bounces. And six on the shot clock, Collison. Where's he going? A little short shot off the rim. And Magnum Roll gets it for LSU. Collison's got to stay out of that kind of traffic down inside with those shot blockers. Down low and a charge. And that was the call in the first game that I thought was available defensively. If the referees are going to allow the guy to back down in, you got to make body contact and hit the floor. Third on Davis. And a Flavo comes back in for UCLA. Flavo has been very patient tonight. You know what, Jim? He really has. You, know, you, you had that matchup, which one played the best, but he right. hasn't 
they haven't really needed to follow his production here tonight. Exactly. I think is the fact that that he hasn't had to step up and he's been very patient. Only had five points at halftime, but has not forced anything. Trying to come off the screen, fighting for it. And Bozeman, tough pass, deflected out. Back to the Bruins. Hollis wanted that ball thrown higher up in the air, going for that dunk that we saw earlier. Temple is on a follow. And that's really some matchup. He really can fight over screens, stays with him. That's the toughest shot he's taken all night. Now to Magnum Roll. And again, the Tigers not a three-point shooting team. This is the only kid really that all season put up a number of them. Davis in the lane, in and out. Just so tough. Anything to go his way in this one. Two out of 13. And Jim, there was the case that they've been so effective with Davis shooting, and then you would, would find Thomas getting that offensive rebound, putting it back, but he, they have not been able to pair up at all in this ball game. It's LSU team back yeah. in to Davis. Oh, he just can't get it to fall, but he's right really for the, the rebound, and he'll go to the line for a three point opportunity. We're talking about a team here tonight. It's been. Uh, such a disappointment, I know, for their faithful. As you see this effort, getting it back, drawing the foul. That foul is called on Hollins, his fourth. But this is the team that knocked out the overall number one seed in this tournament when they defeated Duke in the Sweet 16. Duke in that ball game, talking about their defense, Duke was 5 for 24 from three. For the game, Jim, they were 18 for 65, 28% from wow. the floor. And of course, we all know about the game that Reddick had, three for 14, only 11 points. So that was some defensive effort by this LSU team. But tonight, they just not did not get anything going inside early in this ball game to force UCLA to play their game. Lazar back on the floor for LSU. Eight minutes to go, and we're headed to a UCLA Florida final, which should be fascinating, Billy, when you think about these two teams. The youth on each side, the length that they have, not just the height, the length that they have, how long they play, and a steal made almost going back. Garrett Temple. <clears throat> but again, where's the jump shot? Here comes Mitchell all night long. He's been the only guy even looking for that outside jump shot. LSU now just five attempts from outside the arc, but they missed all of them. And the last time, of course, UCLA got in the final game was 95 with the O'Bannon brothers and a tremendous run to the championship. Jim Herrick, the coach at that time, for their 11th overall national title. Don't forget the play of a freshman on that team, number 12, Toby Bailey. They won it out in Seattle. Championship number 11 for this story program. A follow off the side of the backboard. Temple again with a nice defensive effort. And last touch by UCLA. Davis asking to go back into the ball game, Jim. Ben Howen coaching him up to a spot in the championship game. Given up probably what would you say uh, uh, 70 pounds with Davis or more and probably an inch or so but he stays right with him. Lazar takes the jumper they're just not hitting anything from the outside. Well I mentioned that they are 10th in the SEC from the perimeter three point shooting. It's a phase of their game that is really lacking in this one. Thursday survivor if you love fierce challenges and tough competition catch Thursdays can't miss all new episodes survivor on CBS America's number one network Mana coming to the line Jim think a little bit about this UCLA team and, and reflect a little bit on the year Washington we mentioned Washington and, and the terrific run that they had they beat UCLA the two times that they played them this year at home and away then you have the lost West Virginia you got a little switch out here Billy hold on one second Mata was <laughs> Not going to shoot the free throws. They're going to send Collison back down. They switched him off. The officials caught that. So Mata will shoot the yeah, one. Mata saying, hey, come on, little <laughs> fella. I I'm ready for this one. But, you know, looking looking at their schedule, they lost to West Virginia. They lost to Washington twice. 
They lost actually back to back at Washington at U USC, but they've won 11 straight now, and they've won them very, very impressively. Only as we mentioned at the top of the show, Gonzaga is the only team that scored over 60 points against them in that 11-0 run. And it doesn't look like LSU was going to get to any 60 points tonight. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> no. Well, you thought this game would be in the uh, low 50s, and uh, UCLA hit the 50 mark with about 15 minutes to go. They just haven't yeah. scored anything here for about six, seven minutes to speak of. But I thought it would be 55 53 when yep. I said the low 50s. I never thought that they could hold LSU to 34 points, and they are just doing an incredible job here. Lazar will shoot another one. And you think of John Brady and the frustration he has to feel here in his ninth year after six successful years at Sanford but what he's done to build this program and again this is a young bunch with three freshmen a sophomore and a senior just Darren Darrell Mitchell the only senior starter a team that won its division of the SEC by two games or the overall title in the SEC if you will by two games and four in its own division. Well, it's Baton Rouge, Louisiana kids against Los Angeles's kids, basically. Yeah, really what you're talking about. Local here. kids on both yep. sides. Except for uh, Mba Mute. Hey, you kind of like the uh, numbers working in favor of the Los Angeles kids, wouldn't you say? The flow. <laughs> Still with the flow. And the lead's 22 with a timeout called by the Bruins. And he's going to come back Monday night for the championship game. So a few centers in the house. I'll never forget 1954. Tom Gola led LaSalle the national championship the next year. I figured nobody could beat Gola. I'm listening to the game on the radio. And this guy, Russell, I'd never heard of, is blocking Gola's shots. I'm thinking, how in the world good can this guy be? And we all know the greatest winner in the history of college basketball. You've got Kareem with all those championships in the college level and Bill on every level he ever played on. Two national championships in college, an Olympic gold, and then, of course, a legendary career as a professional. LSU missing another one. Now 28% for the game. That's all. You know, a guy in the house also, Bob Pettit, for LSU, is one of the few guys that ever won a championship. Look at this the... pass inside, and too high for Hollins. Yeah, not to overlook the former Tiger and Hall of Famer. Right. Jersey retired at LSU. Took him to the 53 Final Four. And that whistle could be on Hollins, which would be it. That'd be his nope. fifth? No, it's not. It's on uh, Mba Mute. And you can see Davis still battling. I really love his competitive spirit in this. But he was sitting down before Jim, and obviously this game out of reach. He walked down to Coach Brady and said, you know, I'm ready to go back in. He's tired, but he's still working hard. Good competitor. Got 10 points, six rebounds. But only three of 15 from the field. And uh, that one problems from the line, too. No question. He's uh, now four for 10. It's three in a row. And LSU as a team is under 50% from the line, 11 of 24. Never have it. They're shooting under 70% on the year. Numbers that the Bruins were familiar with from the foul line in their game against Memphis. They, they were able to. And managed to win even despite that poor shooting at the line. Well, primarily because of Hollins' uh, inability. He was two for 11. Bozeman, no one there. Going back the other way. A follow basically going over, picking up his teammates. Said that was my fault because a follow probably should have been breaking in that direction. He pulled back out. Another timeout here. And this one called by LSU, Billy. 429 left and the Bruins have a game coming up Monday night. One of our producers Doug Tui who first brought one shining moment to us back in 87 and uh, he's a little under the weather these days and we sent him his bet our best. We wish he was here with us in Indy. A twisting shot underneath Davis on the follow. Again, Davis is given a lot of effort here, showing a great competitive drive in a game that's completely out of hand. And isn't it interesting, Ben Holland now calls a timeout. The five starters are finally back out on the game again. I don't think that they uh, 
have played too much together tonight. Maybe he's getting prepared for the next game. What's your early take on that one? Uh, really a nice matchup, but I'll tell you what, tonight from a standpoint of top to bottom, I think that UCLA has played the best basketball of anybody I've seen in the tournament. But that's why they play the games. And that's Boog firing up a three. Bozeman up ahead. And the lob. And Moot takes his wait a minute. I'm not that good. Ben Holland will not like that play. How about that one, though? Bozeman intercepts. Ben Holland's still working at sideline, Jim. He is always concentrating. He was talking to us yesterday. Remember during the practice, some of his kids were missing some free throws. He's screaming at him from yeah. the sideline over yeah. here. I lost, an ear, I lost an eardrum. A very intense coach. He's got a ball club that is really delivering. And Farmar draws the foul. So we'll be back in a moment. Well, Billy, you talked about the LSU kids, the homegrown talent. And you look at their starting group, virtually all of them right there for me. The Baton Rouge are just a few miles outside of the capital miles. city. Yep. And uh, this group collectively, including Big Daddy, who saw himself up on the big screen, <laughs> broke into a little smile. Looking back earlier in the year and all that the state's been through, all the tragedy with Katrina and how these kids earlier in the year as the Maravich Assembly Center became kind of a refugee center, an emergency setup area for FEMA and all, and how they all helped unload supplies, set up hospital beds, Absolute exemplary stuff. They used uh, Davis's arms as a me mechanism to hold IVs. They hope. Look at him still working out yep, there. And Boy, one of his better moves. This. One of his better moves tonight. They'd all hope so much to try to bring uh, a real joyous moment back to Louisiana, but they have. You know, they did. They beat Duke. They beat Texas. They made it to the Final Four. I know this is. Been a disaster for it, and I shouldn't even say it in that context, but just a performance that they would love to forget. Well, they were picked preseason third in their league, but uh, they certainly an extremely young team. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if this nucleus stays together to see them back in the final four. Well, I think this is the kind of performance that will make them think that. They had said during the season that they weren't going anywhere until they got that championship. That was before they knew they would do what happen in Atlanta and run through that regional and Davis is fouling out. Well you can't take anything away from the competitive spirit this young guy showed tonight. He got very winded as the game was moving up and down the floor earlier. But when they went to him here he was still trying to produce right down to the wire. And I really think if LSU could go back look at this tape and play the game tomorrow they just spent a lot more time going to him inside earlier in this ball game. Thomas also no factor in this game tonight. Two guys that if LSU was going to win, they had to be huge factors. Davis had 14 points, seven rebounds. Gave it his all to the end. And Mba Mute will shoot another free throw. Let's be honest, Billy. Have you ever seen a set, a set of semifinal games quite like this? No, this this is this, you know, with the great tournament we've had up to this point, this was a very weak. Saturday evening 15 point final in the first one Florida 73 58 this one really never competitive at all and the team that's going to be eliminated tonight on each side of the bracket scored the opening bucket it was two nothing George Mason two nothing LSU and that would be the only lead that each of them would have on the night and Jim you know I, I made that statement but you know if you're a UCLA fan and a Florida fan you'd say what are you talking about yeah, a bad Saturday? this right. has been a great one one of know? the great ones yeah exactly but I'm talking about as far as competitive matchups that turned out to be games going down the wire highly contested that it was not Bob Mute has tied his freshman mark of 17 points fouling out 17 points and when it really counted early on in the ball game a tremendous defensive presence.
One more for Garrett Temple. The Temple family so steeped in the history of LSU basketball. Another His chance. father, Collis, was the first African-American basketball player ever at LSU. And his older brother, Collis III, played for the Tigers just a few years back. Inside of two minutes to go. Just a minute 55 remaining in this one, and it's really never been in doubt in this second half. Fay in the ball game now for the first time, a guy that was a starter at some points way back in his freshman year. Yeah, started a number of games last year, in fact, Billy. Yep. Started 27 games last year. Seven footer from Olympia, Washington. There he is, number 45. Now you think about the size that we'll see on Monday, and they'll be going against Horford and Noah. You know, maybe Faye could see some minutes in that game. I think the game will be a little quicker than that, Jim. I think that uh, it won't be a matter of power. It'll be a matter of quickness, and both of these teams are really blessed with a lot of quickness. Mitchell, nice move. Ruben fouled him. And a chance for the three-point play. Well, Florida and UCLA have never played. The Gators come in here. They have never played George Mason in their history, and they have never played UCLA. It's one of those that you would have thought somewhere along the line that maybe these two programs would have met, but Florida never even had made an NCAA tournament field until Norm Sloan took him to the tournament back in 87. Of course, Billy Donovan taking him there every year now, eight straight years. I think we had a game this year, Connecticut, Indiana, who had never played each other. Didn't, didn't make any sense like, at all. Which is we had Connecticut, Kentucky in the tournament. Roll in and out. And that's going back to LSU. You think about John Brady and uh, the job he did this season, not recognized as the SEC Coach of the Year, even though he lost Brandon Bass, uh, who was the Conference Player of the Year last year. He uh, left school early. He lost the point guard you talked about earlier, Tack Miner. But he won his division by a wide margin. And was, Jim, the SEC Coach of the Year in 06. And there's Mitchell. Well, you got several different polls out there, and Bruce Pearls got recognition at Tennessee. And, uh, you know, what, what, a, what a season, though, for the SEC that had not had a team in the in the final four since back in 2000. They delivered two here. Well, you pointed out uh, in the first game today that when Mississippi State and Kentucky, two teams from the SEC, got to the national championship, they came away with a eventual champion. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you would think that would happen more times than not, but it doesn't. Final 30 seconds. Ruben. They brought in another sub, DeAndre Robinson, number five. We're just going to run it down, run it out, and we can all look forward to Monday night. You know what that means, Billy? You get a 15 and a 14 point final here today, semifinal games, and you said at the break. When that happens sometimes and you're 32 years of covering, that means Monday night could be a gem. Yeah, well, we certainly hope so. I just hope it's a follow up of what we've had throughout this tournament because today was not. The lead at one time was 24. The final is 14, 59-45.